Pastor Dave Viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. I'm going to continue about exposing the true words of Jesus. And I guess I'd like to title this one, Jesus Said What? With a question mark. And when I have dialogue with believers, whether they're fundamentalist Christians or progressive Christians, and they're just trying to hold on to this concept that this Jesus guy of the Bible was so moral and so ethical, and they want to be like Jesus, and they want to tell me, what would Jesus do? I follow him as an example. There's a lot in the Gospels uh, that Jesus said, this historical figure Jesus, that doesn't sound too moral and ethical to me and to many, many other people. So let's continue. He, Jesus, was a warmonger. A warmonger is one who encourages or advocates aggression toward others. Interesting to know, we have real life data and evidence on this. The further people are into the Bible, into Christianity and religions, they tend to be warmongers themselves, right? We see that in politics, we see that in religions and so forth. There's this God, this God guns and glory, this warfare, this mentality of conquest and being a warmonger. Uh, interesting to know that Jesus said, like I say all the time, I didn't come to bring peace, I came to bring a sword. A sword is a weapon to kill. It's been devised and created for one thing, for battle, primitive battle and primitive war. Um, also, the Bible says in Exodus 15, verse 3, the Lord God is a man of war. Here we have battle and war, and Christians, especially those on the right, and even socially speaking, when we talked about politics, people on the far right love battle, they love war. Actually, I'm more of a peacekeeper, a peacemaker. Many of my secular humanist and atheist friends are the same way. We would rather use reason over battle and war. So Jesus was a warmonger. Now, here's a good scripture. So people say, oh, where do you get this idea? Jesus was not a warmonger. Well, it's pretty clear in the Bible. So I'm going to go to Revelation. This, here it is, Revelation 19, the coming of Christ, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called Faithful, True, and a Righteous. He see judges, and what does it say here? What does this guy named Jesus, what is he called? He judges and wages war. yes. It says it right there. In verse 15, from his mouth, speaking of this guy, Jesus, comes a sharp sword. There it is again. For some reason, Jesus always is associated with a sword with battle and war. So that with it, he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God. Doesn't sound very peaceful to me. I'm more of a peacemaker, and I think most of my friends are too. Now, that doesn't sound like a peacemaker. That's a warmonger. Now, let's go to another one. He, Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the other side of Jesus, approves of slavery. Yes, nowhere does Jesus speak against slavery. And believers say this all the time. Well, David, that's Old Testament. There's nothing in the Bible, in the New Testament about slavery. The parables Jesus talked about, many parables, Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 12, Matthew 10, Matthew 18, he talks about using parables of slavery. Never once did he condemn slavery. He never objected to it. Now, the scriptures about slavery, um, gosh, it's so, there's so much information in the New Testament concerning slavery. Now, these are not the actual words of Jesus, but you believe Jesus is God. You believe the Bible is written and inspired by God. Jesus is allegedly a God. So here we have, very clear in Colossians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul's writing, verse 22, slaves... In all things, obey them. Who are your masters on earth? And not with extreme uh, service as those who merely please men. Whatever you do, do your work hardly as to the Lord and so forth. Chapter 4, Colossians verse 1, Masters, grant to your slaves 
I never see Jesus saying anything against slavery. And the very famous Ephesians chapter 6, family, I like this one, family relationships. And in verse 5, slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh and so forth. And it gives more instructions how masters are to treat their slaves. Jesus never, ever once condemned slavery. And you'd think this loving guy who was allegedly a supernatural deity walking on planet Earth 2,000 years ago would have given instruction in his book to all the believers in the year 2018 that slavery is bad. But we human beings figure that out, even though it's in the Bible that it's immoral to own other people. And one more, um, here's a good one. Jesus, he lied about a lot of things. One thing, he lied about prayer. How do we know that? Well, pretty clear, Matthew 17. If, now these are the words of Jesus. To me, this is a lie because it's testable. These are supernatural claims that can be tested. And that's what science does to determine a truth from a falsity. If you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed and say to a mountain, be thou removed, it will obey you. That's all you need is a little tiny bit of faith. That's testable. That's a lie. We know that. The inefficacy of prayer, it's tested all the time. False. It comes out false. It comes out a lie. Um, John 14, Jesus allegedly said, whatever you ask in my name believing, you shall receive. Sorry, erroneous, egregious, it's a lie. That can be tested. Whatever you ask in prayer believing, you're not going to receive it. I was a Christian for years. It never happened to me. Other Christians who were once Christians who are atheists can tell you the same thing. How about this? Proverbs 22, 6. Here's another lie. Now, did Jesus say it? But he's God, you believe. 22, 6 of Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he should go. In other words, brainwash them. Indoctrinate your children. Proverbs 22, Proverbs 24 talk about biblical child rearing. I don't find it very moral. <laughs> Versus secular child rearing is much better. He said, if you train a child up in the way he should go, he will not depart from it. That's a lie. I departed from it. I was raised in Christianity. I was a preacher myself. Many people here at the atheist community of Austin were once Christians. They were raised and trained up in the ways of God, and they departed from it. That's a lie. And one more. I like this one of Philippians 4.13. Again, this is the writing of someone else other than Jesus, but Jesus is God. All scripture inspired by God. I see bumper stickers on, on Christians and their vehicles. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Really? That's testable. Can you really do all things? That's a lie. There's so many things in the book and so many things in the Bible that are just not good. They're lies, they're egregious, they're erroneous. And this is another side of the Jesus of the Bible. So I don't believe it. And when people tell me, oh, Jesus is a good guy, he said moral things. Some things he said were okay. A lot of things he said are not okay. Not very moral. I don't want to be like Jesus. I want to be me. I want to follow my intuitive, uh, my inner nature of morality, secular morality, rational morality that we all have. And they're a lot better than the words of this guy, Jesus. So thank you so much for watching The Preaching Humanist. Have a wonderful day.